So last weekend, Max Verstappen was involved in a serious crash during the British Grand Prix. I don't know if you heard about it or not. The Dutchman was tapped by Lewis Hamilton in the opening phase of the race, after which he ended up with a big blow into the barriers. Afterwards, Red Bull Racing announced that Verstappen's crash had an impact of no less than 51G. But what happens when you go through so many G-forces and have that running through your body on impact? We'll wonder no longer as we bring you our GP fan special on G-Force. So what is G-Force? Let's start at the beginning. The word G-Force is derived from gravitational force, in other words, gravity. It shows how much pressure is placed on a moving object during the process of acceleration and deceleration. An astronaut in space has to deal with zero gravity, which means that no force is applied on him in any way. The constant g-force that a human being has to deal with on Earth is 1g at sea level. Once the speed of an object or person changes faster than gravity can handle, more than 1g of pressure will be released. During a ride on a roller coaster, for example, more than 3g of force can be placed on your body during certain peak moments. Since this is a relatively low amount to which you are only exposed for a short time to, it doesn't actually really hurt the body too much. When designing a roller coaster, the maximum permitted amount of g-force is 5 g's, and that must be taken into account when they're putting it all together. When exposed to a g-force of around about 6 g's or so, most people become rather nauseous. At 9 g's, one can become unconscious, and at 14 g's, that can be fatal. However, this is especially true if you are exposed to it for a long period of time. A jet pilot, for example, of a fighter plane is usually exposed to around about 9G for extended periods, so the pilots wear special suits that push the blood all the way up to the brain and do special training as well to deal with such exertion on the body. What about in Formula 1? Well now we've explained and know what G-Force is, let's go back to Formula 1 where G-Forces aren't quite the same as those of a pilot or a experience on a roller coaster. Explaining these kind of cases in G-forces is somewhat confusing, explains FIA doctor Robert de Telegraph. This is because it is equated with the forces experienced by pilots and astronauts. With a hit like this with a car, it's better to think of an enormous energy impulse over a very short period of time. This is because Verstappen's car came into contact with the spring-loaded tyre stack, and that lasts for about a millisecond or so. Normally, Formula 1 drivers experience around 4 to 6 g-forces when cornering, braking and accelerating. In a crash, however, there are suddenly many more, as you could see with Verstappen's incident. He had to deal with 51 g. These are g-forces that you only experience for a very short time. In principle, the body can handle this well. Your brain is shaking for a while and your vestibular system, the system that involves eyes, ears and brain to help you balance, takes a hit. For that reason, Verstappen was immediately transferred to the hospital for extra checks. So how do drivers prepare themselves for such an incident? Today, drivers appear excellently prepared on the grid. Not only can they withstand the constant g-forces during the race, but they are also prepared for any serious crash. The drivers have to follow a very strict training schedule in which the neck is also trained to perfection. You may have even seen videos of drivers training with their necks and very heavy weights. It looks quite annoying, but it is certainly vital as we have seen this week. Remember to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all of the F1 news that we bring you from GP fans and of course our specials as well. And don't forget too to get onto Twitter and Instagram at GPFansGlobal. That's at GP Fans Global to stay with us throughout the F1 season.